there and welcome to City Line. It is a pleasure to be zooming from my kitchen into your home or your workspace. We have a great hour ahead of us. Later on, we'll be talking with the new Phoebe House. And if you don't know what the new Phoebe House is, because some people have not heard the good news, you definitely want to hang around for that segment. Their executive director, Lisa, will be here to talk about how they are managing during COVID, how they are juggling one of the largest waiting lists they've ever had, and how they are also coming up on their 20th year anniversary here in Tacoma. This is uh, American uh, Heart Association Month in February, so we are going to have uh, Go Red for Women on. They'll be here to talk about just some reminders we need to know to keep ourselves heart healthy. Our Tacoma Humane Society Pet of the Week will be here. Whitney will have somebody in her arms who needs a forever home. And with me right now is somebody who I so enjoy talking with. He has a wonderful background and as cool as a cucumber he never seems to lose it no matter what the blood supply is here in washington state i am talking about kurt bailey who is the president and ceo of bloodworks northwest welcome back kurt thank you for having me amanda it is always great to have you so when we first got on the air and I told you I had read this and I and you nodded because I know you know all about what the blood levels are here in the nation, but also in our in our state. Uh, the New York Times always throws up the top three uh, states that uh, are experiencing massive amounts of COVID and hospitalization and big surprise last night. Washington State was one of those three. So now we're understanding, in addition to that, that there's a national blood shortage. So how does this impact us here in Washington State, Pierce County, and also blood works? Well, the um, healthcare system in the United States is under enormous pressure, and uh, in particular in Washington State. And the high rates of COVID hospitalization is effectively displacing patients that need other kinds of care and simply can't get in. And what that means is patients that have a condition that require treatment are going to get treatment later on. And what that also means is it's likely that their condition will worsen, it'll exacerbate. And so the treatments they're gonna need are likely to be more intense. And that could be a surgery, it could be a deferred cancer treatment, it could be a whole array of things. And it is those things that require blood. So we do have a severe blood shortage today, and we're going to have a perpetuation of that shortage tomorrow, because even as we move through the COVID surge, we're gonna get to a condition where the community has delayed getting care for its health needs, and now it needs more blood than we've had to provide probably in a long time uh, in order to get those needs met. So we are in for a roller coaster across the healthcare delivery system, uh, but in particular with the blood supply in the coming, I would say, year. Kurt, every time we talk, I think of two things. One, how much you look like Paul Rude. <laughs> And number two, I think about, um, will there ever be a day when I don't get to sit with you and interview you and blood shortage does not come up? Last time we interviewed, we could have said Omicron what? Because Omicron was not a reality when I interviewed you 90 days ago. Now we are experiencing somewhat of a perfect storm of factors, mm -hmm. it feels like. There's confusion. Um, over donor eligibility among um, those of us who like to actually give blood or do give blood after vaccine. There's staffing shortages. My gosh, we have a lot of people who are ill who are exposed to Omicron and taking those five to 10 days at least to keep each other safe. And also just a growing number, I would imagine, of people who, once they make that appointment, are no-shows because Every day is a new day. 
Well, it is indeed a perfect storm, and the pandemic continues to throw one curveball after another. And frankly, I don't think it's done throwing curveballs. I think there's yeah. more coming. Um, right now, the blood shortage is largely driven by staffing problems. And so we are well below our target staffing for those folks who actually draw the blood. And, you know, you can't um, train those people up very quickly. It's a skilled position. You want folks who can do that well. Um, and we're hiring more than we've ever hired before, but we're in the middle of the great resignation. And the great resignation affects us in healthcare for sure, and it will continue to do so, I imagine. Um, and as a result, even though we're hiring a lot, we're seeing a lot of people who choose to do something else in their career or in their life. So our challenge right now is largely around having enough staff, and that's gonna continue for a little bit longer. The other challenge, you know, which is a real change for us in um, blood donation, is we went to appointment only right at the onset of the pandemic. And we did that in order to make sure the centers were never too big so that we had social distancing and to smooth out the arrival of donors over days and weeks and months. And that worked really well. And in fact, during most of 2020, the blood supply was really strong and really steady. And it's really only been in 2021 that we struggled and now into 2022 because of surges of Delta, then surges of Omicron, and the great resignation. And taken as a whole, it's just made it much more difficult to collect all the blood that the community needs. The reason I bring up the appointment only, Amanda, is that it's kind of, you know, we, we want to help, and we get this idea of, well, I, I would love to help, and so I'll go donate blood. Well, you can't. You can't just on a spur of the moment walk in and donate blood. You can't on the spur of the moment go to the dentist either. It's just one of those things you got to plan for. And so the, the helping has two, has really three steps. Make your appointment, <laughs> keep your appointment, and then get a friend or family member to do the same. Three steps. Make your appointment, keep your appointment, have a friend or family member do the same. Yeah, and boy, um, you, you know, you have just some, you just summarized it so beautifully. So as you and I sit here and we look back on our conversations and now looking forward, mm -hmm. um, any sense, and if you have a sense, boy, you are gonna be a very popular person in this world of when your operations will get back to resembling something like normal. It is really impossible for me to predict that. I think that um, the staffing difficulties in healthcare are not gonna ease off anytime soon. Um, and so I do expect that while we'll continue to um, recruit and train staff to, to collect blood, you know, we are going to continue to see some attrition. That's just the way of things, it seems. And I really don't know, Amanda, how long that's going to last. Um, the difficulty that presents um, is it's actually really difficult for us to get as many first-time donors as we used to. So you might say, well, why is that? Well, the reality is first-time donors generally are encouraged to donate blood through a mobile blood drive. So it's a blood drive at a school or at a business or a place of worship or some other community location. And oftentimes they're encouraged to give blood for the first time by a peer, another student, by a fellow member of their congregation, by a coworker. And um, because we are short staffed, and because there are a lot of uh, businesses that aren't um, having employees returned yet, and also schools that are being pretty careful about how they operate, uh, we don't have nearly as many mobile blood drives as we mm. did before. And so the number of first-time donors that are able to come in and get encouraged to come in has really dropped. And so my um, ask of your listeners is, hey, if you haven't donated, let me be your friend or fellow student or coworker or member of your congregation that says, now's the time. Now is the time. Over the next year, we are gonna need more blood in this community than we've needed in a long time. Now is the time. So if you have not donated, come on in and do so. You'll love it. 
Absolutely. You know, how, how beautifully said was that? Because that's how I, I discovered Blood Works Northwest was a friend at a workplace said, come on, before we go have lunch, let's go give blood and get some really great cookies. And so we did it. Kurt, you and your team have looked at that model and have kind of shifted all the chairs on how we give blood. You were actually, let's talk about before this, you were um, having blood drives in beautiful big spaces like the Museum of Flight. Is that something that you're wanting to go back to or is that something that it's time has come? We will continue that program. Um, and uh, there is something really special about giving blood in one of those um, experience locations. Now, you know that my favorite is the Museum of Flight as a former pilot, you know, but other cultural venues like the Paramount Theater and you donate blood and you're looking up at that beautiful vaulted ceiling with the mosaic, that's really something else. You remember that. It's really neat. And so um, allowing those spaces to get used so that members of our community can give a gift to the community feels so beautiful. And so we are gonna continue with that program for as long as um, organizations open up those grand spaces uh, for blood donation. I love that. And what we think is we have to meet donors where they are. And, and some donors, they wanna to come to a donor center, they have a routine, they know the staff of Bloodworks who work at that donor center, and they just do that as a matter of habit. Then there's donors that um, like it convenient, and for them, uh, we will have a mobile blood drive program once again, scaled up as soon as we have enough people. And um, it makes it easy for them to say yes, and they can come on and donate at their school or at their place of business or whatever. And then there's folks who wanna donate, but they like to mix it up a little bit, and they think donating at uh, uh, T-Mobile Park is pretty cool, or they think donating at the Portland Art Museum is pretty neat. Um, and so they want to wait and they want to see what venue's coming up and they make that experience part of the gift they give to the community. So we want to meet people where they are, offer an array of um, ways in which folks can donate blood so that it's enjoyable and it's also convenient for them. Kurt, last question. Gosh, time goes by very quickly with you. Who should not donate blood? Let's clear up that myth before I say goodbye to you. Well, um, certainly we want everyone to be in good health. Uh, and so if you have been ill, particularly if you've been ill with COVID, wait 10 days. Okay, wait, okay. wait 10 days. There is no waiting for vaccination. You can donate the same day. You can get your vaccine and you can walk right over to donate blood, same day if you like. Um, other folks who shouldn't um, donate blood, um, are folks that perhaps over the last just few months have traveled to certain parts of the country. And you should ask us, you know, um, is travel to that, or excuse me, certain parts of the world, I should say, is travel to those parts of the world uh, going to disqualify me for donating blood for three months? And that's because we don't want to have uh, malaria, which can be spread. Um, we don't want to have that enter into the blood supply. Um, and there's other precautions too around tattooing and some other things, but generally it's only a three month deferral now. So wait three months. And in those cases, please ask, don't assume you're not eligible because the data really clearly shows that far more members of the general public believe they're not eligible to donate blood than actually are. And many, many people assume they're not eligible. And in fact, they are eligible. So don't assume, please check. The FDA did do everybody a bit of a favor um, over the past couple of years where they have relaxed some of the restrictions. And so perhaps you checked and were ineligible a couple of years ago. Well, that restriction may have been relaxed. So again, don't assume, actually check, and you might find that you can give the gift of life again. Kurt, it's always um, lovely and hopeful and inspiring to talk with you. Thank you, thank you so much. And I wish you the most skilled phlebotomists will come your way so you can hire them so we can get all those staffing levels back up. Kurt, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Amanda. Always a pleasure.